Finally, September 19 is here. After all the mudslinging, cross carpeting, defection, political rhetoric, peace signing, it is time for the Edo people to decide the fate of the 14 candidates across the state. Call it a two horse race, you are entitled to your opinion. Call it a return leg of the match that was played four years ago. It is still your view. One thing that is likely to happen is that the election will be won and lost in the next 48 hours. So for the next 48 hours, Plus TV Africa is yet to give you minute by minute account with your guest analysts, with our guest analysts, experts, and our team of reporters in Edo State. Welcome to Edo 2020 Studio. It's a lovely morning. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, I'll be introducing my guest to you. Please don't go anywhere. Welcome back. To kickstart the conversation, we have here a public affairs analyst and also a broadcaster, Adini Kunu. Good evening. Uh, oh, good morning. Uh, good morning to you. It appears you've been here since yesterday. Preparing. That's why I thought it's a good evening. <laughs> it's a good morning. Anyway, I say thank you for having me in the studio. It's a uh, pleasure. It's a pleasure, and it promises to be interesting. Yeah, going and uh, anytime soon, we'll also be joined by the president of uh, Voters Awareness Initiative, Wale Ogwade, who is currently in Abuja. He will be joining the conversation. But before we get the information started, let me just give our viewers some bit of fact far from at Doe State. Uh, we have, um, interestingly, we have a total number of polling booths across the state where people will be voting today. Uh, we have about 2,627 polling booths. And uh, we also have uh, a total of 2,210,534 registered voters for the governorship election in Edo State. And out of this uh, 2 million uh, plus vote, uh, registered voters, 1,159,325,000 of them are men, while 1,052,209 are women. Okay, we have more men than women. Then the, the population of Edo, for record, we have um, 5 million people in Edo state, according to 2014 estimated population of the state and they're talking about the number of uncollected pvcs that's uh, very very important to this exercise we have about 483,769 voters who failed to collect their pvcs that's almost uh, let's say about 20 percent of the registered voters are not interested let me use that word or they were denied by whoever is meant to give them their PVCs. Then for record, we have um, 14 political parties participating in the election. And interestingly, we have 12 of them who are males and two are females. And um, talking about the major candidate, we'll be talking about that from time to yeah, time. It's okay. I, I find this quite interesting. I understand that, um, not that I understand, I've also noticed that Edo is quite a sophisticated state when it comes to election. They are mm -hmm. quite interested in whatever happens in their state, who becomes their governor, who becomes their elected office holders. So how do you see this pan out? Well, Funnily, we always have less than 50% turnout in most elections. Well, it, but one of the things that um, you reeled out that is very informative is the fact that between 2016 and now, we've had an increase uh, in the number of, as you said, I think that has to do with the, the polling votes or something. So it tells you that uh, there's a likelihood that more people will vote. Uh, obviously, that has to do with more people that have come under the voting age umbrella which makes a lot of sense in terms of that addition. But of course, you cannot look at Edo states in um, isolation. I always appreciate the fact that we go a little bit back to understand what we are talking about. Don't forget that um, the APC uh, is both a child of necessity and a child of a lot of agitation. Uh, don't forget that it took um, Adam Soshomole that some years ago, uh, it took him about um, a year plus 
to be able to get the mandate from uh, Professor Sumo because what happened? The court eventually adjudged him winner of that election. And um, according to what we learned, that actually arrested um, the, the great man of Edo politics who is no more with us, basically. And that's Antonio Aneni. Hey, I told Antonio Aneni. I'm very, you took that from me. That's <laughs> fine. But if you look at when um, Osho Mole himself was there, uh, a lot of people said, well, uh, his coming was a sigh of relief. And many persons have also said that they were tired with all of the things done by the former governor, his predecessor, basically Lucky Binedio, that there were lots of things that were not accounted for and that they just looted the treasury. Um, but back then, we knew that they went to court time and again, but obviously, Binedio never went to jail, despite all of the allegations they brought before him. And don't forget, it comes from a very highly respected uh, family. I talk about the son of the Asama. Respected or, uh, or popular now? When you say respected, his father, uh, the former governor, the predecessor the of the Esama of Benin, uh, actually uh, remains to date a highly respected man in the Benin kingdom. Okay. So that simply means at the same time, and for many people who perhaps are consumers of statistics, the Benin people are about over 50% of the adult population, Very about true. 52%. So it tells you that there is this influence that usually will come anytime something affects anybody from that particular sphere. That simply means more numbers, more influential people, uh, more politicking, more jaw join resulting in look away. That is my own assessment of the situation. So when Oshomole came, obviously, it felt as if the APC had come to stay. But for many persons that are talking about Obaseki and Izeyamo, many people as of the time Obaseki became the anointed person to lead Edo State, did not also get countenance by the people who have worked assiduously with that party. Now, what you're probably trying to, let me not uh, jump into your thoughts now, is that um, there is a history behind why we are having a staggered election there today. And uh, you, you, you were able to do justice to the fact that it was because Osareme Osubo was the governor then, yeah. and uh, according to court, he did not get that mandate validly, and we had Oshomole who came into power. And as we speak, a due election cannot be on the same timetable with all general elections. Well, it would never be. And it can never be. <laughs> because usually you would have us have the elections around uh, February, March, then we'll have the swearing in by May, which has to do with states that have not been affected. Exactly. But the Edo election will always have a new person sworn in by November. Exactly. So that simply means whoever wins this election will get into that office by November. And he must use his four years. Well, you he use your four He or she. Be a she. Well, <laughs> that, that's another conversation you've opened up. You know, one of the things I'd like to say uh, before really getting into this kernel of this, this discussion is to say that we have 14 candidates in this election. And it is also very interesting to tell you that we have a young people's party that one would have considered, all right, because major, we have a greater number contender. of youths in this country, then definitely we should have them. And now of the 14, you have two women. Uh, I'm happy that at least women could hold their own. But I'm also not pleased with how we've shaped the conversation over time. Maybe the media and some other people outside of the media circles, well, maybe not your own uh, media organization, I've seen it happen with some other media organizations where for the past three months, their conversations have centered mainly around two major political parties. And one of the things that we do as media professionals, we shape opinions. We hold a very important place in society. So when you have 14 candidates contesting to get to Osadebe House in November, why is it that we repeatedly shape this conversation around two major political parties. That simply means we are doing two things. First, we are keeping the voter or the electorate out of getting enough knowledge about other capable hands in the state, for instance, I do, where this election is taking place. Then secondly, what the media has also been doing is to strengthen the supposed acceptance of two out of, as we have 14. it now, 14, which is not the ideal in a democracy. So while the media hold a place to checkmate the people, 
that are not doing well, especially the bulwarks, which are two major political parties. The media is also poking the texture of democracy by not enlightening the electorate enough about other people that are capable of taking the reins of power in this state. Uh, if you look at what happened, especially the debate that was organized, that many people were jumping about and saying, wow. In the first place, we've had some debate days before that, where you have about five or so people that were presented and they held their own. I think it is completely anomalous that in a debate, you create a separate platform for two major political parties and you create other platforms for and then you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm happy we are bringing this up. And yes, trust sir. me, I think it's a conversation between idealism and realism. And uh, I'm not saying what you're saying is not a reality, but I, I look at situation across the world, not just Nigeria. Uh, it will shock many people to know that there are more than two parties in America. But oftentimes, those, two, those other parties they don't vie for the presidency. I agree. So I'm but saying that... Yes, the please. media is also not talking about them? Well, how come it, we it, don't know about them? I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm not holding forth. No, no, you won't hold forth, okay. right, and you, you will not dare hold forth, because you are meant to be neutral in this <laughs> I conversation. Agree. I'm saying that if... I have to say with every sense of humility, I'm a follower of the American election. And I can tell you that most of the governors, virtually all the governors in the U.S., are from the, the Republican or the Democrats or, or, or the Democrats, but if you're talking about the counties, you're talking about all municipalities. What we call the local government. Your yeah. local government. You have these parties hold forth, and do you know for for many people who do not understand, well may, maybe for many who don't follow the electioneering in the U.S. until the major elections. Exactly. They give focus to this independent candidate because independent candidacy is there as well. Okay. So my position in this conversation is the media shapes opinion. Okay. It therefore means that if the media uh, could actually review and as well as do a proper revision of their role, the media can shape the conversation for people to think beyond two parties and begin to think about others. Even if the predominant parties perhaps... Okay will get that um, broad um, conversation during major presidential elections, the governorship election should actually switch gears okay. such that we focus I, I, I'm happy you're bringing up the, the major functions of the media, but trust me, it's a conversation I will stay with you on throughout today. But let, we, we understand that uh, Wale Ogwadi has uh, been able to get us now. Uh, Wale, good morning again. Uh, we seem not to uh, hear you, but I think you can hear me. Good morning. I think you need to unmute your, uh, your audio because you can hear me, but we can't hear you. Probably by the time you unmute your audio, we'll be able to listen to you clearly. So back to you. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, I'm not running away from that conversation. Yeah, but but, but, I, but I, you, I, you said something that I will not let go. You said <laughs> idealism and realism. Because every because, reality excuse is based me, on what, ideas. what I meant by realism is that each time we try to push this conversation, even when INEC insists that all the parties are going to be listed, and we see the kind of jurors from viewers, from people who are watching, that why are these people wasting our time? What is wrong with this? Using their word now, mushroom parties, they use all kinds of words to say that. Why are you involved in the election? Are you even showing concern? I'll give you a practical example. I've been close to one of the candidates, and uh, we're talking about how he can you know, make an impact in this election. And the young man was telling me that uh, in four years' time, I, I will be able to make more impact. And I was like, the election has not started. How are you sure you're not going to win the election? And... He just smiled and laughed. And I said, that's not fair. You, you, we created time for you to have the same opportunity to talk about your program, to talk about your manifestos, and you're sounding like a clown. You are talking about the next election. You, you, you have completely ruled out yourself from the game. So for me, I think there are pretenders well, and there are contenders. Well, there is no way you won't rule out jokers 
who perhaps uh, have some money to obtain the forms uh, to participate in some elections. And also seek popularity. Well, most I'm definitely... I'm talking about the, personal experience with Yes, them. Most of, some of them will do it because they feel their CV should get a boost. Uh, some others will do it because they believe that if I am considered right now and I'm seen by perhaps the major political parties, I could move locations and say, based on the fact that I contested so-and-so election, they give me a place of importance when I switch gears. All of those activities are also the negations of democratic principles. And um, for people like that, even when we have independent candidacy, uh, one of the unfortunate things for people like that is that they may not be found in the scheme of things because uh, they are jokers. Uh, and don't also forget, one of the things that we should know is the media is a very huge pivot in everything. I'm not going to take it away from the media. If people say, why are you wasting our time? I think, I think, and I'm not indicting the media, being a part of the media itself, is that we should change the conversation. Because you need about a thousand times of restating something for it to really stick in somebody's memory. That's true. So it is important for the media to, to shape keep, the conversation. Continue going. the advocacy. Because if you look at it, Nigeria can be better at the instance of the media continually doing what we believe will balance the rock apple cart. So I think that that is uh, a conversation that we will continue to have, but still going to the two political parties. For many people who perhaps do not understand, um, of the 18 local governments, Akoko Edo, from my own research, happens to be the oldest and that has lots of ethnic group under it of all the people, despite the fact that you have Benin people being the largest of the ethnic group there. That's true. And for many who do not even understand, if you look at some states there, okay. in Edo State, you have Orobos are still there. Uh, you have Ibera people still there. You have some Igbo people who are ethnically Even set to... some in, part of the Yoruba. Part of the, in fact, there are some places where it is only Yoruba that is spoken. If you go to a place okay, like... Okay, sorry, we'll come back okay, to okay. that. We understand that uh, the mic issue has been sorted out. Walu Ogwade, good morning again. Morning, can you hear me now? Yeah, good to have you. Perfect. Yes, um, I understand you are in Abuja. I'm wondering why you are not with... Or you are not in a do state this time around because you hardly miss any election. Tell yes. us why you are not there. <laughs> and of course, coincidentally, I have to be in Abuja. And I was thinking maybe I was going to, but obviously my people are in Abuja. Really. So I'm monitoring, I'm monitoring. And these people are, these people are, I jack me, I have no chance that to be part of you. <laughs> okay, good to have you. And before so, I go on, I want to thank my brother, Ali. you did a great job. Yeah, thank I you so much. If I do, he will do it. So I'll just say, don't just leave me. Let me be covering the field as you say in politics, in political science. That's the doctrine of covering the field. Well done, my brother. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, let, let's get the conversation started from your hand. Um, we started this conversation from 8 o'clock, and uh, uh, Adeni Yukuno has opened a whole lot of vistas of conversation. But let's get your take on this issue. We're looking at how have we got into a two-party system? You remember the story of 1993 where it is just NRC and SDP. And it appears that's still the same song we have when we have 14 political parties participating in the election. Yes. My brother, you know, I told you that Lee has really touched us in the field. I would just add that indeed, this is where the media will come in to promote the other political parties that are irrelevant as it were, or that are small, or that are not strong. But again, I have been in the trenches, particularly in this country, and I know many people with significant control when it comes to issues of election and election activities. Because uh, you need money to go out the look and cannons of any, any community. And because of that, definitely, there is need to mobilize the people, we call it mobilization. And mobilization needs money. You need to put structures on ground. Structure means you have people who will be working for you and ensuring that everything you need and how you bring it comes out very well. And the only way you can set up a structure is with the use of money. It is money you give to those that will work for you, that you, they will call it full soldiers. It is money that these soldiers will need 
for them to move up and do what they want to do for you. Without money, there is nothing you can do. No doubt, the media can play a role, particularly the new media, as they call it, social media, they can play a role. But the role they will play will be insignificant with the as we compare to what money will do. So to that extent, that is the reason why we only have strong political, or two strong political parties so far since the beginning of this dispensation. We have played the protein before this dispensation, during the, 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 the First Republic, we have two major political parties, the AG and the MPC. Uh, then next one we have the uh, MPN and the UPN. And uh, now we have an effect government created SDP and uh, NRC. And now we have two major political parties. One has been standing for a long time by PDP, and the other has been coming in various from ACN, uh, and of course now we have APC. So it is not everything but the money and the clout those who are there uh, pretend to. And if anything at all, to confirm what I've just said, you'll find out that sometimes the, the, the one, one person who is a strong man in an, in, in an environment leaves the political party, joins another one, like someone like Mimiko, leaving a, 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 a strong PDP and joining a Labour party, and of course, winning an election on that platform. Um, of course, I, 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 Saraki did it too in Farah, the father of uh, the Pala, Olushola Saraki. So it's about the clout of whoever is leading, the, the clout of the personality, the clout of the leadership. So in Nigeria for now, it is a person. And don't forget, someone like Trump, who eventually who is now the president of America, to try it because my brother put on the house some few seconds ago. Um, Trump tried, just tried the money he had. He was not able to lose it because it is an American, it is an electoral process there that is constrained in the party system. But here we still have what we call the individual. It is the individual that drives the political system. And look at it now. Many individuals are now putting media organizations. Again, going to the argument of the submission of Kuno. It's the media now that is determining because the media is supposed to be open only to those who own the media. So if I don't have a media now, I don't see how I can go to Plus TV and they will give me all the platform I need compared to the person who is the promoter or who, is, who has close affinity with the promoter of, the, of, of, that, of that platform. Okay. Th thank you. Uh, two of you are on the same page on that, and I, I'm not disagreeing with you. Like, you reminded me, I'm meant to be neutral, so it's the expert opinion that actually counts. But let's look at um, another major set of people that are critical to this election, the co-members, the core members. Uh, from time immemorial, they seem to be very, very pivotal to our election. And uh, no thanks to what happened in 2011, when we had them massacred. And, uh, but we realize that they are resolute. They do the best they can. So how do you describe these court members' activities, even in COVID? Let me talk to you, Wiley, first. Wiley, first. Yeah, uh, we have to look at it holistically. Because the issue here is uh, we not take all. So the, the, whoever is the gladiator or the power or the Goliath, as we say, we want to crush his enemies. And any of the people that will work again so as to succeed, because he knows that after succeeding, he now reaches out, as we call it, the percocide of properties. He is in control of the state forces. And with that, he can do and undo. The, the government in Nigeria generally is the lord of the man. And for your information, the governor is even as, is more powerful than the president because when it comes to election, the governor is one that has the political machinery at the grassroots. The president just comes from one constituency, he controls just his own world as it were. And you see what happened to Adam Zoshemon, this same Adam Zoshemon, because he was a national chairman, he thought that he can do and undo, whereas his world is important and the world went him up. So the power is at the grassroots. And because the power is at the grassroots, it is better that if that power is shared between the grassroots uh, and those who are involved, so that at the end of the day, uh, there will be a balance of power, I would call it, in politics. Okay. I hope I get the question because 
I can't, uh, the, the network just made the detail. Yeah. I, I, I think that uh, you I probably didn't get my question, but another thing I think you need to do is to see how you can mute. I think you're listening to via TV, so there's a delay and there's a kind of echo. Yeah. So yes, you can put yes. up the TV or mute it so that you can hear us directly. I guess that will help. Okay, but I'll come yes. back to you, and uh, probably by the time you listen to the question, I'll put to yes. I Kuno. Guess, I guess it's okay. Uh, yes, good. That's better now. We'll come back to you in a, in a while. Now, we just raised the issue of the core members. And to a large extent, it is expected that a good number of them are not indigenous of that state. So there's tendency for them to be neutral. There's tendency for them to be apolitical on this issue. So how significant is their role now? Because I listened to the Director General of NYC saying, please protect my core members, do not do anything funny to them. Well, for somebody who has a lifetime stake in Edo State as myself, and for somebody who also understands that as a core member, you could redeploy back to your state, you could get letters if you're not very okay in terms of your health or for some specific reasons. So I can say that maybe about 10% of the entire core members that will be participating in these elections are actually from Edo State. So that's a fact of knowledge that I've just talked about. That's how many percent? About 10% okay. of the entire, you know, you are, you, usually for every batch, you could have in excess of 2,000, depending on the numbers. The numbers no, are usually down. not even. So basically that accounts for that. But one of the things that I believe everybody should know is that the people who are voting themselves not the politicians. That is one thing. You could talk, oftentimes we talk to the wrong people. The first people that should know this is that Edo citizens who will be participating in the elections, who perhaps could get disgruntled by what is going on and fight, are the people that will be voting. The political class are just a minority. The second set of people that should be educated on the need to protect the core members are the security operatives. We've seen instances where some security operatives are even a threat. Let me quickly go back to the November elections in Kogi State. We saw on camera how police officers in the advance went to a number of polling stations and took ballot boxes and shot in the air to disperse people. We've had incidents, incidences of stray bullets hit somebody. So we have to talk to the right people. The political class could say, these are the things we want. For instance, you're talking about the political class. You're talking about security operatives. Yesterday we learned, according to what Wiki said, and it's in the news, that about 300 policemen besieged the hotel where he actually is putting up. So as far as I'm concerned, I think the conversation must really be well directed. So it means that anytime we're talking about the protection of core members, it should be part of what INEC fuses in the advertisements or the sensitization packages on the broadcast uh, stations there in print so that when people read, they can see that it is not only the responsibility of the political class, it is the responsibility of the people that are participating in the election that will likely be the people to get violent when the election takes place that has to be addressed. So I think that that is a very important angle to this conversation, that the people that are participating in the election should take also responsibilities. And oftentimes, because most of them don't go to the uh, polling stations armed, it becomes very difficult for them to do anything against the people that come there armed to disrupt the electoral process. So I think that we need to address these issues okay. repeatedly, and it should not be something that comes up only during election. Excuse me, if you're talking about electoral process, it is continual. That's true. And because it is continual, and I've recommended this uh, in my little research as a finding, that after elections, especially maybe we're talking about three months before election, that's when INEC becomes active again. Even if INEC has made an announcement of what's going to happen about six, eight, nine months before now, the real action seen by INEC takes place alongside when political campaigns happen, which is about three months to this election. Exactly. So INEC must actually evolve from going to sleep until three months to the elections because sensitization is something that takes time to get to everybody 
and to stick it. Exactly. And uh, the, the continuous voters exercise, you also begin and all the sensitivity. Yes, please. Also yes. Begin. So, Wale, I'm, I'm sure you can hear me now. I just quickly want to get your take because as we speak, uh, the process has begun and from time to time we'll be getting feel, feel, feelers from our reporters who are right there in a dose state. So, are we, what we're looking at is how do we ensure the protection of the core members and how do we maintain the neutrality of these core members? Uh, the first thing is the diversity. I'm sure, I hope I, I can happen this time because we have had meetings with my neck concerning the diversity of core members. They are the ones who deliver. In this, in this type of in our business of civil society, we call it delivery. If the core members don't do it, don't get it right, definitely the whole collection will be a strong way. And of course, everything that is put into this will go down the drain. Their welfare is the paramount and most the paramount. And in a situation where officers are lodged in five star hotels and where uh, core members are allowed just to sleep in, uh, in classrooms and the uh, dirty environment, mosquito infested environment, obviously it does not go well. Sometimes that is where the sleep. That picture that has been shown are where those people are kept. Sometimes they don't even have access to food. Sometimes even eventually they are giving food. They will be giving food um, in plastics. So they will be treated as if they are, they, are, they are beggars or refugees. We shouldn't do. For God's sake, they are on special national assignment. And they should be given that special recognition. It, it is already budgeted for, and if it's not budgeted for, definitely it should be done. And the second one is the security people that you have, you have you just made the slide. That one will be another issue that we discuss with that. But for the current members, the first thing for any election, we are all together. I mean, if a journalist is not well treated, he can't perform very well in his, in his work. In his work. Anybody can perform well if he's not well treated. So, and of course, I hope that it won't happen in Edo that immediately after the elections or even in between, they will now say that their welfare has not been settled. And because their welfare has not been settled, obviously they may disturb the election. Because it has happened before. Okay. So welfare is very paramount. Then the second one is the security that beautiful, has, beautiful, you know, uh, the, uh, adequate security. No uh, doubt they can't carry both. But the polling unit will be secured. I know what I'm talking about because I've observed it and I've noted it, I've seen it in action. Hoodlums will come with budgets, bonds and so forth and disturb the thing. Because they know that the youth couples who are the managers of the polling unit do not have anything to protect okay. themselves. Well, and well, we, 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 we will come back. Like, I just want to quickly. Uh, yeah. And thank you. Uh, we'll come back to that. I, I think the two points you raised are very critical, and I hope that uh, it gets to the right quarters and the necessary things will be done. But let's mm. change the conversation a bit. Uh, there were some sound bites that we had yesterday, especially yeah. from one of the major um, observers group, that's the Transition Monetary Group, saying that. Uh, Electoral offenders will be prosecuted on the spot. Let's take a listen, then we'll come back. 